A king was once hunting in a great wood, and he hunted the game so eagerly that none of his courtiers could follow him. When evening came on, he stood still and looked round him, and he saw that he had quite lost himself. He sought a way out, but could find none. Then he saw an old woman with a shaking head coming towards him, but she was a witch. Good woman. He said to her, "Can you not show me the way out of the wood?" "Oh, certainly, Sir King," she replied. "I can quite well do that, but on one condition, which if you do not fulfil, you will never get out of the wood, and will die of hunger." "What is the condition?" asked the king. I have a daughter," said the old woman, "who is so beautiful that she has not her equal in the world, and is well fitted to be your wife. If you will make her lady queen, I will show you the way out of the wood." The king, in his anguish of mind, consented, and the old woman led him into her little house. Where her daughter was sitting by the fire, she received the king as if she were expecting him, and he saw that she certainly was very beautiful. But she did not please him, and he could not look at her without a secret feeling of horror. As soon as he had lifted the maiden onto his horse, the old woman showed him the way, and the king reached his palace. Where the wedding was celebrated, the king had already been married once before, and had by his first wife seven children, six boys and one girl, whom he loved more than anything in the whole world. And now, because he was afraid that their stepmother might not treat them well, and might do them harm, he put them in a lonely castle. That stood in the middle of the wood. It lay so hidden, and the way to it was so hard to find, that he himself could not have found it out had not a wise woman given him a reel of thread which possessed a marvelous property. When he threw it before him, it unwound itself and showed him the way. The king went so often to visit his dear children. That the queen was offended at his absence, she grew curious and wanted to know what he had to do quite alone in the wood. She gave his servants a great deal of money, and they betrayed the secret to her, and also told her of the reel of thread which alone could point out the way. She had no rest now till she found out where the king guarded the reel. And then she made some little white shirts, and as she had learned from her witch mother, sewed an enchantment in each of them. And when the king had ridden off, she took the little shirts and went into the wood, and the reel showed her the way. The children, who saw someone coming in the distance, thought it was their dear father coming to them, and sprang to meet him very joyfully. Then she threw over each one a little shirt, which, when it had touched their bodies, changed them into swans, and they flew away over the forest. The queen went home quite satisfied, and thought she had got rid of her stepchildren. But the girl had not run to meet with her brothers, and she knew nothing of her. The next day, the king came to visit his children, but he found no one but the girl. Where are your brothers? Asked the king. Alas, dear father, she answered, they have gone away and left me all alone. And she told him that, looking out of her little window, she had seen her brothers flying over the wood in the shape of swans. And she showed him the feathers which they had let fall in the yard, and which she had collected. The king mourned, 
but he did not think that the queen had done the wicked deed, and as he was afraid the maiden would also be taken from him, he wanted to take her with him. But she was afraid of the stepmother, and begged the king to let her stay just one night more in the castle in the wood. The poor maiden thought, "My home is no longer here. I will go and seek my brothers." And when night came, she fled away into the forest. Then she saw a little hut, went in, and found a room with six little beds. She was afraid to lie down on one, so she crept under one of them, lay on the hard floor, and was going to spend the night there. But when the sun had set, she heard a noise, and six swans flying in at the window. They stood on the floor and blew at one another, and blew all their feathers off, and their swan skin came off like a shirt. Her brothers were not less delighted than she to see their little sister again, but their joy did not last long. You cannot stay here," they said to her. "This is a den of robbers. If they were to come here and find you, they would kill you." Could you not protect me? Asked the little sister. No, they answered, for we can only lay aside our swan skins for a quarter of an hour every evening. For this time we regain our human forms, but then we are changed into swans again. Then the little sister cried and said, "Can you not be freed?" Oh no, they said. The conditions are too hard. You must not speak or laugh for six years, and must make in that time six shirts for us out of star flowers. If a single word comes out of your mouth, all your labour is in vain. And when the brothers had said this, the quarter of an hour came to an end, and they flew away out of the window as swans. But the maiden had determined to free her brothers, even if it should cost her her life. She left the hut, went into the forest, climbed a tree, and spent the night there. The next morning, she went out, collected star flowers, and began to sew. She could speak to no one, and she had no wish to laugh. So she sat there, looking only at her work. When she had lived there some time, it happened that the king of the country was hunting in the forest, and his hunters came to the tree on which the maiden sat. They called to her and said, "Who are you?" But she gave no answer. "Come down to us," they said. "We will do you no harm." But she shook her head silently. As they pressed her further with questions, she threw them the golden chain from her neck, but they did not leave off, and so she threw them her girdle, and when this was no use, her garters and then her dress. The huntsman would not leave her alone, but climbed the tree, lifted the maiden down, and led her to the king. The king asked, "Who are you?" What are you doing up in that tree? But she answered nothing. He asked her in all the languages he knew, but she remained dumb as a fish. Because she was so beautiful, however, the king's heart was touched, and he was seized with a great love for her. He wrapped her up in his cloak, placed her before him on his horse, and brought her to his castle. There he had her dressed in rich clothes, and her beauty shone out as bright as the day. But not a word could be drawn from her. He set her at his table by his side, and her modest ways and behaviour pleased him so much that he said, "I will marry this maiden, and none other in the world." And after some days, he married her. But the king had a wicked stepmother. Who was displeased with the marriage and said wicked things of the young queen? Who knows who this girl is? 
she said. She cannot speak, and is not worthy of a king. After a year, when the queen had her first child, the old mother took it away from her. Then she went to the king, and said that the queen had killed it. The king would not believe it, and would not allow any harm to be done to her. But she sat quietly, sewing at the shirts and troubling herself about nothing. The next time she had a child, the wicked stepmother did the same thing. But the king could not make up his mind to believe her. He said, "She is too sweet and good to do such a thing as that. If she were not dumb and could defend herself, her innocence would be proved." But when the third child was taken away. And the queen was again accused, and could not utter a word in her own defence. The king was obliged to give her over to the law, which decreed that she must be burnt to death. When the day came on which the sentence was to be executed, it was the last day of the six years in which she must not speak or laugh, and now. She had freed her dear brothers from the power of the enchantment. The six shirts were done. There was only the left sleeve wanting to the last. When she was led to the stake, she laid the shirts on her arm, and as she stood on the pile and the fire was about to be lighted, she looked around her and saw six swans flying through the air. Then she knew that her release was at hand, and her heart danced for joy. The swans fluttered round her and hovered so low that she could throw the shirts over them. When they had touched them, the swan skins fell off, and her brothers stood before her, living well and beautiful. Only the youngest had a swan's wing instead of his left arm. They embraced and kissed each other. And the queen went to the king, who was standing by in great astonishment, and began speaking to him, saying, "Dearest husband, now I can speak to you, and tell you openly, that I am innocent and have been falsely accused." She told him of the old woman's deceit. And how she had taken the three children away and hidden them, then they were fetched to the great joy of the king, and the wicked mother came to no good end. But the king and queen, with their six brothers, lived many years in happiness and peace. The voice of Learn English A to Z is heard in this video. Re-uploading or copying content is strictly prohibited. We shall take further action without any prior notification, as soon as we become aware of it. The perfect pet. Rory had always been an animal lover, but he grew up with two very mean parents. His mother said she had allergies, but every time he asked her what the allergies were. They changed. If he wanted a cat, she was allergic to cats. If he wanted a fish, she was allergic to fishes. If he wanted to go to the zoo, she was allergic to crowds. Rory's dad didn't have any allergies, but he hated animals. However, he loved eating meat. So when Rory said he wanted a cat, his dad said, "Hmm, cat. I haven't eaten cat before." We can get it nice and fat, and then eat it. Then Rory cried and stopped asking for a pet. When Rory finished university, he moved to a small town, so he could have lots of space. The town had lots of dog parks, and it also had a cat park. Cat parks weren't normal, so he was very excited to go there. Rory thought a lot about what pet to get. Every day he went to the dog park and the cat park. He talked to people and played with their animals. People told him that cats and dogs were hard to look after, but he didn't want to get a small pet. 
So one day, he got a big dog called Buck. Buck was an Alaskan Malamute, a big gray dog with lots of energy. Rory had always loved these dogs because they were social and loved to play. Rory and Buck had a lot of fun. They went for walks twice a day, and they played lots of games. Buck never bit Rory, and he never peed on the floor. However, Buck had a lot of hair. Soon, the house was covered in hair. When Rory tried to clean it up, he sneezed a lot. Rory went to the doctor, who told him he was allergic to dog hair. Rory couldn't believe it. He was allergic, just like his mom. He thought maybe it would get better, but it just got worse. Soon, Rory was sneezing all day, and he couldn't play with Buck. So he decided to give Buck to a family on his street. They didn't have allergies, and they had lots of time to play with him. Rory cried all night after saying goodbye to Buck, but he didn't sneeze again after that. Next, he tried a cat. He made sure to get an allergy test first, and he wasn't allergic to cats. But he wanted to be safe, so he chose a sphinx cat, a type of cat that had no hair. He also knew that sphinx cats were very social and were a bit like dogs. He called his cat Aslan. In the beginning, he had lots of fun with Aslan. They played together and went to the cat park, and he had no problems with allergies. Sometimes, Aslan peed on the floor. But Rory taught him where to go, and this wasn't a problem. However, Aslan was a very social cat. When Rory was cooking, Aslan jumped up and tried to take the food. When Rory read, Aslan scratched the book, and sometimes he scratched the book so much that Rory couldn't read it. When Rory had a bath, Aslan jumped in the water and then got angry because he didn't like water. If Rory didn't play with Aslan, then Aslan was mean to him. He scratched his legs and hissed. One day, Rory woke up and the bed was covered in dead birds. There were probably 30 of them. Aslan had killed all the birds and put them on the bed as a present to Rory. Enough, said Rory. He found a sad old woman who lived alone and gave Aslan to her. She loved the cat, and when Aslan scratched her, she just said, Oh, be careful, my dear. Finally, Rory decided he wasn't ready for a big pet, so he decided to get guinea pigs. Guinea pigs were very pretty and they were easy to look after. Some of his friends at school had had guinea pigs, and he always wanted to play with them. But his mom said he couldn't, because she was allergic. He got two guinea pigs, because they were very social animals. One was black, so he called her Black Beauty. And the other was pink like a pig, so he called her Babe. Black Beauty and Babe were sisters, so he thought they would be friends. But Babe was a very mean guinea pig. Babe was worse than both Buck and Aslan. When Rory gave the guinea pigs food, Babe ate all the food before Black Beauty could get to it. If he tried to give food to Black Beauty, Babe squeaked and bit him. If Rory played with Black Beauty, Babe started eating their little wooden house. And when Rory played with Babe, she always peed on him. It was like she waited until he was holding her to pee. But they were easier to look after than Buck and Aslan. If he wore gloves when he was near them, then it didn't hurt when Babe scratched and bit him. And he did really love Black Beauty. One day, Babe will die he said to Black Beauty, and then I'll get you a real sister. That day did not come. One morning, Rory put on his gloves to feed the guinea pigs. The gloves were wet, 
Babe had peed in them. He didn't know how she had done it, because they slept in their little wooden house, which was locked. But Rory had stopped trying to understand Babe. He washed the gloves, and then went to see them. The little wooden house was red. Rory couldn't understand. It looked like... paint? Then he saw it. Babe's mouth was red, covered in blood. Next to her was Black Beauty's body. But it wasn't all there. Babe had eaten most of it. There was blood everywhere. The door of their house was covered in blood. Their food bowl was full of blood. Rory felt sick. The door to their house was open. Babe had unlocked it. How could a guinea pig break a lock? But that wasn't the worst part. Babe could have run away. She could have run into the woods, but she chose to stay here. She wanted Rory to see this. She wanted him to see what she could do. She wanted him to be afraid of her. Rory took a deep breath and went to get his phone. He called the police. Five years later, Rory loved his job, and he knew he was good at it. His little shop won a prize almost every year. If you looked at the shop, you would think it was just a normal butcher's. Rory the Butcher, said the sign. Next to the sign was a happy picture of Rory holding a big knife. Under the knife, there was a pig who did not look so happy. But this was no normal small town butchers. If you stayed in town long enough, you might hear the stories. Rory was wonderful with animals, they said. If you visited once or twice, you might think that he was an animal lover. People brought their pets into the shop and talked to him about them. But there were always pets with problems. People brought in angry dogs and mean cats. Rory never went near the animals, and he always held his big knife. When Rory knew a customer well, he waited until they were alone in the shop. Then he said, I'm selling a new kind of meat, you know. Just come with me into the other room. Oh, and bring your pet. Strange things happened in that small town. Mr. and Mrs. Foster had a dog that peed in their beds. The children loved the dog, but the parents hated it. Then, one day, while the children were at school, the dog ran away. Nobody could find it. The children cried and cried. Don't worry, children, said Mrs. Foster. I'm sure we'll see Spot again soon. I went to the butcher's today and got some lovely steaks for us all. That will make you feel better. Sometimes, Rory's mother called him and asked how the business was going. You've changed, you know, she said. I haven't changed, Mum, said Rory, and she laughed. I still love animals, but I love them more when they're dead. The voice of Learn English A to Z is heard in this video. Re-uploading or copying content is strictly prohibited. We shall take further action without any prior notification as soon as we become aware of it.